This is Miss Sebastian, and we're going to look at real numbers in the coordinate plane unit test. If a number is not a rational number, then it is blank. Think about what could not be a rational number. Okay, rational numbers are numbers that can be put into fraction form. And blank numbers are numbers that cannot. Those are called Irrational numbers. If you're not being rational, you're being irrational. Name a perfect cube. 
So a perfect cube is something that is a number times itself three times. So one times one times one would be one. Two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. Three times three times three. Three times three is nine times three is 27. You could keep going on and on and on forever. A hundred times a hundred times a hundred. A million times a million times a million. Those numbers that they equal are those perfect cubes. What is the square root of 25 divided by 36? So the square root of 25 over the square root of 36 is equivalent to the square root over all of it. You can break it up into the square root of the top, the square root of the bottom. So the square root of 25 is the square root of 5 squared, or just 5. The square root of 36 is the square root of 6 squared, or just 6. So the square root of 25 over 36 can be simplified to just 5 over 6. Mark needs to cut a piece of glass to replace a broken window. He has four pieces of glass, a 6 foot long, 5 feet long, 3 feet long, and 7 feet long. If the length of the glass needs to be cut, sorry, he needs to cut, is square root of 30 feet long, which piece of glass should he cut to have the least amount of unused glass? So what I need to think of is my perfect squares. So he's got a six foot long piece of glass, a five foot long piece of glass, three foot long piece of glass, and seven feet long, okay? We're looking at perfect squares here. So I could say that this is also the square root of 36 feet long. That's the same thing, that's equivalent. Five times five is 25, so I could say the square root of 25 feet long. Three feet is the square root of nine feet. And seven feet is the square root of 49 feet. So, if he needs the square root of 30, I can see that my 5 feet long is not going to work. That square root of 25 is not long enough to cover square root of 30 feet. Neither is my 3 foot long. So, I can use either the 6 foot or the 7 foot. But if I want to know the least amount of unused glass, that means I'm going to choose the lower number here. And so that would be the six foot long piece of glass because square root of 30 is less than square root of 36. If the sail of a ship is five feet long and has a diagonal length of 13 feet, what is the height of the sail in feet? So here. Here's my boat picture. Okay, so if it's five feet long and 13 feet for the diagonal, 
Okay, what is this side? We're going to make it x. This is a Pythagorean theorem problem, so we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So your legs are the ones closest to that right angle. So it's the 5 feet and something x equals your diagonal length squared. So 5 squared is 25. And 13 squared is 169. We have to get the 25 off the left side where it's being added to x. We're going to subtract it from both sides. So 169 minus 25. we get 144. To get rid of the square that is attached to the x, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of x squared, you get x. When you take the square root of 144, you get 12. So the height of this cell in feet is 12 feet. Four students work to find an estimate for the square root of 32. How do we find the true estimate? So you're going to have to look at your perfect squares. Remember, you've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Well, 32 is right here in between 25 and 36. So I'm going to say it's between 5 and 6. Okay, 32 is 4 units away from 36 and 7 units away from 25. So it's going to be closer to the 36, so it's a little over halfway. So I'd put it at about 32.7. Which of these non-terminating decimals can be converted into a rational number? Well, remember, um, the non-terminating decimals that repeat can be turned into a rational number. So they have to repeat exactly. On the first option, you've got 0.71711. 7111, this is not repeating exactly, so that can't be it. 0 0.02, 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.02030405, that's not repeating. Now it's got a pattern, but it's not repeating. Then we've got 01, 011, 0111, that's not repeating either. 521, 521, 521. So this one could be written as 0 0.521 repeating. And then you can turn that into a rational number into a fraction. Robbie draws a square with an area of 757 square inches. What is the approximate length in inches of one side of the square? So remember that a square, the area, is S squared, the side length squared. So we know that this is 757 equals the side squared. So to get rid of the square on the side, we have to take the square root of both sides. Now you could estimate this. But you can also type it in your handy dandy calculator to get the best estimate. And that is what statement is true? Every rational number is a square root. Every irrational number is a fraction. Well, we know that one's not true right off the bat because irrational numbers cannot be put in fraction form. 
every rational number can be written as a fraction. Yes, that's the definition of a rational number. Every square root can be written as a whole number. Well, we know that that's not true because what about the square root of three? So that's not true. Um, and every rational number is a square root. Going back to that first one, every rational number is not a square root. Um, square root of three would not be a rational number. Harriet needs to ship a small vase. The box she will use has a volume of 125 cubic centimeters. If the side lengths are all the same, what is the length of each side? So you have volume equals the sides cubed, because it's length times width times height, but all three are the same. So we're gonna take the cube root of that volume to get rid of the cube. So the cube root of 125 is 5. So each side length is 5 inches. Using the numbers 5, 9, and 27, create a problem using no more than four operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square, square root, cube root, or cube, where the solution will be an irrational number. Explain why the result of your operation is an irrational number. So I'm gonna write my three numbers. Okay, and let's just, I can just throw some operations in there. But five plus nine minus 27 is still gonna give me a integer of some sort. But I need to make it an irrational number. And the way I make something an ir irrational number is take the square root of something that's not a perfect square. So 5 is not a perfect square. So there's 1, 2, 3. I could do one more. Okay, I could do the cube root of 9 there because that's not a perfect cube. Um, you can just throw in some of those things to make it an irrational number because this um, cannot be put in fraction form because those are not perfect squares or perfect cubes. Okay, um, the square root of five added to any other number is an irrational number because an irrational number rational number added to a rational number still gives you that irrational number. Okay, which of the images above represents a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Explain your choice and then explain how the figure proves the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to look for something where a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and they've already done the work of squaring for me. So all I have to do is try these out. So 9 plus 36 equals 64, or 25 plus 144 equals 169. So your job is to figure out which of these is true, which of those do equal, and then explain how it proves that. Say, well, those do add to prove this. So I'm not telling you the answer there, but I want you to use those two uh, formulas there to figure out.